Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we have another Vesta tutorial. Uh, if you have any suggestions about my tutorials or want me to do a system that uh, maybe is difficult for you and think would be easy for me, uh, or you have a challenge for me, put it down in the comments. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel and you know I'm, I'm here to help you guys out. So today what we're going to be doing is making a platinum selenide monolayer for um, one of the viewers in a past video was asking me about it and uh, I told the viewer, I said, you know what, I'll go ahead and do that and here I'm doing that. So, you know, if you guys out there have any uh, systems you want me to do, just leave a comment. Uh, also, update on the channel. Uh, I think maybe in the next couple of videos we'll start moving into uh, uh, solving the Schrodinger equation in Python using NumPy. Uh, and then what we're going to do is uh, we'll solve it for probably an infinite square well, free particle, then we'll add in some different potentials, maybe a harmonic potential. Uh, uh, and then what we can do is we can use this sort of framework we have um, start going into classes in Python and then eventually what I want to do is build a Hartree Fock program using NumPy and then eventually extend this into a DFT program um, just very simple but 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 also very powerful uh, and that it will teach you the nest the, the basics of coding uh, the algorithms how they work also what I want to do is build a molecular dynamics program for maybe one or two dimensionals just like you know a, a particle moving in a harmonic potential, but it, it'll, it'll really show people how uh, nuclear dynamics is done. We'll be using the velocity for lay algorithm, uh, stuff like that. Anyways, so uh, let's get on with VESTA tutorials for now. So what we're going to do is open up our platinum selenide unit cell here. Uh, and by the way, if you have not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. It, it helps me a lot because the more subscribers I have, the more suggestions I have, uh, the better I can get feedback and steer the channel. Uh, that actually helps a lot is when I get feedback, uh, believe it or not. So th this uh, system for uh, platinum selenide actually is interesting. You can make a monolayer using just this unit cell and adding vacuum on either side. That is technically a monolayer. Um, but what I actually uh, really, really like, uh, well, you could you could do the mono, you, you basically could do the monolayer in a few ways, but I'm, I'm going to show you the, the way that uh, uh, gets me the structures in other uh, papers I read. So I, I basically went on, I read some papers, and I saw how the platinum selenide monolayer should look. And here's what you do. So uh, you can do the boundary method, like I've said in other videos, but this one actually uh, is a little more elegant if you go to edit, edit data, unit cell. Then we're going to go to transform, and we're just going to transform it by two in the z direction. So go ahead and select OK. Uh, yes, we're going to search atoms in a new unit cell, add them as new sites, select OK, apply. OK. Now what we're going to do is we are going to export this as a VASP. Okay, and we're going to call it platinum, cell, platinum selenide uh, monolayer.vasp. Select save. Cartesian coordinates. And then we're also, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to center on A. And we're going to delete all the atoms except these. And then what we're going to do is we're going to delete the periodicity in B. Okay, then we're going to go to C and delete the periodicity in A. Okay, very, very, very important part right there. Then we're going to save this file export data. We're going to save this as an XYZ. So platinum selenide monolayer dot XYZ. For some reason, when I save it as a VASP, I have to save it as literally dot VASP, even though I save as type VASP. But for XYZ, I, I don't have to do the dot XYZ explicitly. So I just press save, uh, no. So now what we do is we come and we go to our platinum selenide monolayer XYZ. And you can see we have this one platinum, two selenide stoichiometry preserved. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this into the monolayer VASP file. And since we only have one platinum followed by two selenium, we have to reflect that here. So the first atom is platinum, the next two are selenium. Now you can see our atoms span about seven to four. So, uh, Let's see, above seven right now we have five, below four we have about eight, that's about 13 angstroms of vacuum. It's actually probably exactly this, uh, if I'm thinking correctly. So what I'm going to go ahead and do, let me actually just rename this, platinum selenide monolayer. I'm going to actually just put this to 15, okay? I'm going to save it. I do it in the FAR3, you save with F2, then escape. Uh, then we come back here. To Vesta and we're going to open that up and you can see here you actually have your final product 
Uh, so what happened is our XYZ file, let me just give you some, our XYZ file is these three atoms here, okay? Uh, that is what is in the VASP now and what is in the XYZ. So if you were to go use this in Quantum Espresso, I would re-add the atomic labels and these are the atomic coordinates you put into Quantum Espresso and these are the unit cell parameters you put into Quantum Espresso, just this here. But if you want to visualize the VASP file, you have to delete these atoms here. You can also use these coordinates as well in your Quantum Espresso. Uh, but yeah, these are the coordinates you use in the Quantum Espresso, same as in the VASP file, except here you have to re-add the atomic labels. These are the atomic coordinates you put into Quantum Espresso, and these are the unit cell coordinates you put into Quantum Espresso. Uh, and what happens is when you load them into VESTA, when you load these coordinates into VESTA with a unit cell, VESTA automatically populates uh, these three. So we did not have these three in our input file. Uh, VESTA automatically put them in. Uh, if I save this entire thing as an XYZ though, uh, then what will happen is if you put all of these atoms into Quantum Espresso, it will crash because you're explicitly including the repeating atoms. So just to, just to reiterate, there's only three atoms we're going to put into quantum espresso. It's going to be these three. Uh, actually, this platinum atom could be any one of these, but we have it be we have it this one, and there they are exactly these coordinates here, but with the atomic labels. So you would literally just copy paste these into quantum espresso. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> that's it. We're done. That is the platinum uh, selenide unit cell. What I'm going to go ahead and do is hit Z, and I'm going to show you how this expands. Uh, so I'm going to go to properties first. I'm going to change the color of platinum. Uh, maybe something a little darker. Like that. Okay. Select OK. Then we'll go to properties. And, oh, sorry. Not properties. Boundaries. And I'm going to go 4x4 uh, four four in the XY. Then I'll go to space filling model. Uh, and then actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit minus 1 over here. And yeah, so you can see this is the platinum selenide unit cell. If I press B, rotate it. This is the uh, another common side of platinum selenide that they show in the literature. Um, this is our this is our monolayer though. So uh, plain and simple. I guess let's make the thumbnail something like that. And uh, yeah, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below. Uh, please subscribe to my channel. It's a huge help and leave feedback. I cannot stress this enough. Please leave feedback for me. And I hope you enjoy the upcoming series where we do some uh, uh, coding of Schrodinger equations, stuff like that, uh, in NumPy. Thank you. Take care.